Sunday, we're just going to start. That'll be our theme song. <laughs> Welcome to Center Grove Baptist Church, everybody. The good, the bad, and the ugly are all here. I won't, I'm not going to point them out. You just figure it out on your own, okay? Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. We're going to uh, go through uh, 11, verse 11, all the way through the rest of the chapter. <clears throat> don't let it scare you. That is a lot of scripture, but don't worry about it. I can read really, really good, okay? Uh, I didn't uh, say, and the offering plate has already been going around. If you're a visitor today, we have a visitor's card in the back of the pew. We also have some prayer request cards uh, there and a pen, hopefully. And uh, if you need something, just make sure to give it to me or give it to uh, one of our deacons as you leave. Stick it in that bucket that Jim's back there. He won't care one bit. But we'd like to have just a, we're not going to chase you down. I'd just like to know that you were here and send you an email thanking you. Well, has anyone ever seen the good, the bad, and the ugly? Okay, we've got one. Anybody else wants to admit it? Okay, all right, here we go. Remember, we don't wear halos around here. That's for the church down the road, okay? I have watched this movie before when I was a kid, and I've seen it in little parts and pieces. And I decided as part of my pastoral study, I needed to watch it one more time. So just for you, I watched this movie one more time. And I'm, tell you, I'm glad I did. It was, it's a great movie. It's got a weird story to it. But Clint Eastwood is, is my John Wayne, okay? I, I'm, I'm, I like John Wayne, but I, I'm a dirty, hairy man myself. I like, I like Clint Eastwood. If you haven't seen that movie, it's really good. But I, that has nothing to do with the movie, okay? I just like weird songs, okay? But these three people groups from last week kind of represented the good, the bad, and the ugly. We had the Jewish people that were actually coming to the temple for times of worship. You had the apostles, which were coming for the time of prayer, and you had the beggar who was coming to receive his daily uh, income of money. He was begging for things. And then we see Peter tell the, the beggar, I don't have any money, but what I do give, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he rose up and he walked. Now, I'm not going to make you rise up and stand because this is a lot of verses, but I want everyone standing in your heart as we read this, okay? Can I, can I trust that your heart's going to be standing? Okay, all three of you, thank you very much. The rest of you can just sit down there right there like you are, okay? In Acts 3, verse 11, the word of God declares, While he clung to Peter and John, all the people utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon. And when Peter saw he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us? As though by your own power of, our own power or piety we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses in his name. By faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. Verse 17, and now brothers... I know you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring of all things, about which God had spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him and whatever he tells you, and it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who, who came after him also proclaim these days, You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant the God made with your fathers saying to Abraham and your offspring shall be the families of the earth blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by the turning every one of you from your wickedness. Would you pray with me? God, you speak through your word. You said everything that takes our attention away, I ask that you just bind it now. Father, I thank you so much for your promises. I thank you for this story that we're going to read and the truth that comes from your word. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, see, we, he, we see here, we left off, the apostles were out there. They healed this beggar. And the beggar takes off. And now, you remember, he was lame from birth. So his legs probably were about that big around, and he couldn't move. His friends had to bring him and set him at that beautiful gate 
every day, every morning. He had to receive whatever he could from other people. The giving of other people is what he relied upon. Well, <clears throat> when, he, when Peter says, you know, you be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. He got up. And he did what? He walked. The word parapetasso means to be walking around. He didn't just like... You ever see those deer, or a, a horse, maybe a horse or a cow after they're born? I mean, they have trouble getting them. This dude didn't have no problem. He immediately started running. He immediately started running. My son, he scooted. He never even crawled. He scooted, and then he ran. There was no crawling. There was no walking. It was scoot to run, just like that. I, I disproved the theory of evolution with my son. But this guy didn't take one second, and he was completely as we'll see today, made whole. Now, look at the first. Look, I want you to look at the good in verses 11 through 13. Now, I say the good is Jesus. You can never go wrong when you say Jesus is good, but that one time when they ask him, good, good teacher, and he says, why do you call me good? There's no one good but God. But, hey, I think, I think Jesus has proven his goodness to us. That one is marked down. But let's look at what Jesus is gathering these people together. Look at the gathering in the first couple verses. Peter and John were trying to get into the temple for the hour of prayer. They find the beggar, and God heals him. And he goes through the temple and starts stirring up stuff. You ever you know somebody who can go through an office and stir up stuff? Now, I don't know how it is on Arnold Air Force Base, but I know on Redstone Arsenal Army Base, that is the main thing, drama. It's all about drama. We can stir up anything just because we don't like our job. $30 an hour. You ought to like your job. That's what I say. But he returns to the apostles, and these people are watching, and they know who this guy is, and they say, oh, my gosh, he's been healed. What happened? And they follow him. Now, I love this, and you southern folks are really going to love this. Do you know where the apostles take the large crowd to preach to them? Front porch. It goes to the front porch. That's what Sol Solomon's portico. That is a porch. Right off the colony. Why? Because that's where all good southern people know how to talk about God. I'm telling you, if you want a good sermon, put me on a front porch. Preferably in the fall. Because if it's in the heat, we'll probably preach Revelation. But I'm going to tell you something. He took them not only to the front porch, but to the southeastern part of the temple. Hey, that's proof. The southeast is God's country. Amen. All right, some of y'all are like, I have never seen that in my Bible. No, you're not going to see that in your Bible, okay? This was a large crowd. That, uh, Solomon's portico was about 600 yards long, and it was, had large pillars and had marble backdrop. And when you preach from something with their stuff behind you and all that sound can do it, and it's kind of loud like I am, amen? Okay, I'm loud. Amen. All right, Greg, put his thumb over. Yeah, you're good. All the lights are going crazy back here. Yes, that's right. Well, here, Peter says, look, I finally am inside this temple where the last time I denied my Lord three times. Now, I'm not going to deny him again. We're going to shout it out, and we're going to fill this temple with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter sees there are many Jews that follow him, and God has gathered them all, and it says they were utterly astounded. And they weren't utterly astounded at the front porch. Or even the 600-yard-long marble-laden colonnade, they were astounded. This beggar was running and jumping. And if somebody says, why in the world were they so astounded? Don't they know what God can do? Oh, yes, they knew what God could do, but they saw it. And that makes a big difference. Look at the gall, 12b. He says, why do you wonder? God had performed many great signs and wonders through the whole time. Remember the parting of the Red Sea, the flood that covered the entire earth. Why do you stare? What do you mean, why do you stare? This joker has little bony legs. He couldn't walk for 40 years, and now he's jumping around like a gymnast. That would make you stare, okay? Even if you're a kind and well-mannered person and you don't stare and you don't point, I guarantee your mouth, mouth would have been on the floor and you'd been a... It would have astounded you. And it did them. And they all were gathered to Peter. He says, do you not understand? We did not do this. Are we good? 
and holy enough to do something like this? Now, healings in this day were always to be known, known to be done by a God of some sort, either a good God or a bad God. Uh, bad Jesus was actually, uh, they said that when he was healing people, they said he heals people by the power of Beelzebub. And Jesus said, can Satan cast out Satan? Can't do it. A house divided against itself cannot stand. They knew this was a good healing. This good Jewish boy had never, boy, he's 40 years old. He, he's a little more than a boy now. But this Jewish boy, when he was little, he couldn't go into the temple. And when he got old enough to go into the temple, he still couldn't go into the temple because he was not whole. And now he could go to church like the rest of them. They knew this was a healing of God. However, who did it? Who did this? Now I want you to look at the God in verse 13. There are four times the word theos is used here. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of your father. When God says something four times, guess what he wants you to do? Listen. There's a reason God repeats himself in the word of God. He glorified his servant Jesus. Okay, we're going to stop there for a minute. That word servant is a very, very... Well-known word, especially in Roman society, the word is pedia. We get our word pediatrician from it. It means a child, his child. He's given the connotation of the Son of God. But also he's alluding to Isaiah, where he's talking about the suffering servant in, verses, in chapters uh, 52 and 53. He's talking about the suffering servant. He said, this servant you delivered over to Pilate, and you delivered to death, even after the pilot, the pilot, he was going to let him go. Even after secular government said he's not guilty, you still sent him to death. Now, Jesus is the good, no doubt, okay? And we see kind of where the bad is coming, okay? The bad is going to be the Jews. Actually, I want to go even farther than that. For us at Center Grove today, and all around this world, it's those who deny Jesus. If one person knew what it was like to deny Jesus, it was Peter. On that night, warming himself by a fire, this middle school girl comes up and she said, I know you were with him. You're one of his disciples. And he curses and says, I don't know the man. And the rooster crows. And it says, Peter went out and wept bitterly the Jewish people gave Jesus over to death because they had such a narrow view of God they, their beloved Messiah was going to take control overtake Rome and build a new kingdom and he will he's going to overtake everyone listen to what John MacArthur says if you try to give Jesus any other title to imagine Jesus who was not the savior is as foolish as to imagine Shakespeare who's not a writer or Rembrandt who was not a painter his name is Jesus because he is our example, guide, leader, or friend. Though he is all those things, his name is Jesus because he is our Savior. The bad are those who deny Christ. Look at the backwards, verses 14 through 16. Now the holy children of God, the apple of God's eye, deny the Messiah, the holy and righteous one. They denied him and asked for murder, He killed, says the author of life, and had the evil release the evil. You go back to that time where Jesus stands there. And you've seen it on the Passion of the Christ where Jesus, barely even recognizable as a person, stands there before Pilate. And Pilate says, do I re to release your king or Barabbas, the guy who has murdered people and who has caused insurrection throughout the entire land of Judea for years? Rome didn't want that dude to be released. They're just saying, look, you're sure they're not going to choose a murderer over somebody who blasphemed. But they did. We choose Barabbas. You saved a killer to kill the Savior. That's amazing. And you say, those people are just terrible. Every one of us has done that exact same thing. 
when you deny your Lord in any area of your life, you have trodden underfoot the Savior of the world. Each time. And he says not only that, you killed him, but God raised him from the dead. Why? Because he's God. He is the author, the progenitor, the beginning of all life. And he doesn't let things die if they don't want to, he don't want them to die. Folks, Jesus wasn't going to die unless Jesus allowed himself to die. Do you know he could have lost upwards of nine pints of blood at that beating? Three to four more pints of blood when he was hanging on that cross. He had maybe a pint and a half left. Now, I've heard of you being a quart low. That's a lot low, okay? He didn't have much left. It was the power of a holy God and a love of a Savior's heart that put, took him up that mount at Calvary and hung him on that cross. And it was the nails not holding him, the love in his heart that held him to that cross. You can't look at Jesus and not feel bullheaded verses 17 and 18 says you worked in ignorance and you have all heard the story all of your lives Jewish people have heard chapter 52 Isaiah verses 14 and 15 behold my servant shall act wisely he shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted and many were astonished at you his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them. They see that which they have not heard and understand. And listen to this last part. Until you hear the gospel, you cannot receive it. You can sit in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and listen. To the gospel but any good wife will tell you there's a difference when your husband listens and when he hears you any good mama will tell you there's a difference when your child listens and when he actually hears you you can sit here and listen to me preach all day long but if you don't hear the gospel it's not salvation I like one of my favorite sayings is going to McDonald's won't make you a cheeseburger and going to church won't make you a Christian it doesn't work that way you must hear the gospel Jesus said in John 6 44 that the only way you're going to be able to get to the Father is if he calls you if the Spirit calls you well we've seen the good and we've seen the bad now look at the ugly 